Howdy y'all, Banjo Ben here, continuing the course, The Theory of Practice. I hope that you've enjoyed it so far. Today we're going to cover the ideal practice session as it pertains to the guitar. So we're gonna spend time looking at all six segments of that ideal practice time. We're gonna bring in some of the tips that I've mentioned and we're gonna look at what it actually looks like to practice our guitar and work our way through those segments even over the course of several days. I hope that you'll Join me and I know that you're excited about that. If you're watching somewhere else besides the website as a Gold Pick member, I'd be honored to have you on board at BenjaminClark.com. You get access to this course, which is well over an hour long, as well as 750 other lessons and various courses. So come check that out, BenjaminClark.com. If you are here on the site, let's jump right in to the ideal practice session on guitar. We got our guitar in hand. We're tuned up, hopefully. Good enough for bluegrass anyway. And we're beginning our practice session. I like to log what time I start. And I look ahead and say, look, I've got the next hour. That's going to start right now. That way we can hold ourselves accountable and track some of our progress. And for the next 10 minutes, we're going to warm up. It's important that I state right here off the bat, we're not going to play anything fast, nothing hard, difficult, that is. We're not going to uh, challenge ourselves. This is all about getting loose uh, physically and mentally. Getting relaxed might be a better way to say it. Um, what I love to do is start listening to music at this point. Just even if I'm not um, actively listening, just in the background, because there may be something that inspires me even subconsciously uh, that helps me in my practice session. Um, and if you listen to something here that, that you like, maybe you don't know it or maybe you want to work on it more, you can immediately go and put that in section five, which is the explorer. And that way when you get to section five, you can have something to go look at to potentially learn. If you're starting this uh, ideal practice from scratch and you've never practiced logged or maybe you're, you're not working on anything, maybe you're brand new to guitar, then that's the place to start would be section five. But after a day or so of practice, you're gonna be starting here in section one um, with, the, um, with the warm up. So I'm gonna go ahead and point out something here. I'm, we're gonna use this as my practice material today or at least part of it is a Beaumont rag for guitar. So it's there on my site. I've downloaded the tab. We'll take a look at that here later. But what I'm gonna do now is just go back to my practice log. And I've got these blank ones here that you can download. And uh, I'm gonna say Beaumont rag. Let's excuse my handwriting. My goodness, I'm trying to write on a music stand there. That's Beaumont rag. So that's what we're going to listen to and come back and, and work on. Now for the warm up, what our model ideal session says here is to listen. Uh, to begin doing stretches, there's all kinds of great stretches online that you can look at. Uh, I'm not a physical therapist, but I'll just recommend that you get your fingers loose, just easy, that you get the blood flowing, however that may be. And we can start playing almost immediately, but sometimes we have some tennis elbow issues and some carpal tunnel stuff that we need to just take the time to stretch that out. Reason being, not only is it good for our health, but if we get stretched out and we get warmed up properly, then we're less likely to get frustrated in our practice sessions because those things don't get in our way. Sometimes if we just jump right into playing, especially if you try to play fast, then you'll fail more often and then that immediately starts a negative reaction, chain reaction. Okay, so we're gonna warm up, we're gonna practice. If there's something easy going in the background, some kind of music, I might start playing along with it. Otherwise, I may turn the music down and I may, um, or stop it, and I'm just going to lightly start playing my guitar. I mean, usually going to start with rhythm. And I'm just trying to get in touch with the instrument. I'm asking questions like, do I need to change my strings? Nah. <laughs> but I'm just trying to make good, easy playing movements on my guitar. And I'm trying to be present. Sometimes our warm-ups even elements of our warm-up can help tell us what we need to practice. Maybe as I'm doing that easy rhythm there, I miss a lot of my bass strings. That could tell me that I need to work on my accuracy, my rhythm. I've got lessons for that, or you could create your own exercises for that. But after I've played rhythm or so for about five minutes, I can speed it up a little bit, but not much. I don't want to go fast. Then I'll usually pick something. And when we pick something, we want to pick something that's very easy for us to do, that we're not having to really think about. Meaning, we're not having to use our brain to retab or to remember how it goes. Rather, we can devote our brain to listening to how we're playing 
and diagnosing things even now. So I usually go on guitar, I usually go to Wildwood Flowers, just one of the first things that I play. And I don't play a hard version, I just play the main melody. It's just amazing how this little warm-up will start to make me think of things that I might want to practice. And it's okay to stop and say, ooh, C-Licks. I need another C-Lick that goes there. Ooh, I, I remember the C-Lick that I learned at one time, but I can't quite remember how to do it. I go and I make a mark on my Explorer. You see how this becomes interactive. So right from the start, we're creating this environment, this interactive environment that's going to push us forward in practicing. And that's, that's what we're wanting to do. Okay. So there's our warm-up. Um, we don't do anything stressful, nothing hard. It's just easy stuff. And by the end of 10 minutes, if we were to play for five to 10 minutes straight, we're gonna be pretty warmed up, pretty warmed up. We're still not gonna get fast. We might do some scales. Slow, slow, don't get fast. We have time to get fast, okay? And let's, uh, let's look at the next part, which is calibrate. Part two is calibrating. What do we mean by calibrate? Well, anytime we calibrate something, we have a standard that's correct, and we're bringing whatever it is into um, an accurate, closer to the accurate standard. We're calibrating it. And so when we talk about calibrating with our um, practice, we're wanting to just do things as slowly and precisely and as perfectly as, as we can. We're not worried about speed, we're not worried about skill, we're not worried about tough licks. Um, the f one of the first things that I'll do is just examine my posture and how I'm sitting and holding the guitar. Think about things like pick grip. Yes, even after all these years, I'm thinking about those things. Um, I'm thinking about pressures and tensions because those are enemies to speed and they often increase whenever we get stressed out or when we're trying to play something fast and hard. Uh, I think about my left hand, my front hand tension. Am I pressing the fingerboard too hard? Might I be able to loosen my finger pressure a little bit and still get great tone on the guitar? So I do a finger pressure audit that I learned from Kenny Smith. That's helpful, just right at the beginning, to know that I don't have to work any harder than what I have to um, to play guitar. And then I want to take things that will eventually find their way into part two, and I want to try to play them slowly and perfectly. Slowly and perfectly. I hear people all the time playing stuff that's a little too hard for them, and they never get it clean. And it's because they don't calibrate, they don't audit. So things will find their way into here, but let me, right now, let's just make believe. Let's say that I've already been practicing for a while and I've filled out my practice session because as we practice, I'm looking at the next day and I'm writing stuff in the next day's practice log for what I'm going to work on. So let's say I practiced yesterday and a couple things that I want to calibrate are um, a cross picking roll uh, for Beaumont Rag and um, a triplet lick in C. Now we've got the uh, tab for the cross picking roll. We can look at that here in a bit. I don't have a tab for this triplet C lick. It's just one that I've heard somebody play. It goes like this. Okay. Um, I think it's probably in a bag of licks in C or maybe my advanced wildwood flower or somewhere in there so you can find it. I missed a few notes and I got dirty with my right hand. So that was way too fast, at least at this calibrate. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a moment to play through that several times slowly where I don't have to mess, where I'm not gonna mess up. So. If I can play it several times perfectly, I'm gonna speed it up a little bit until I mess up. We don't wanna mess up yet. So I'm speeding it up and I'm noting my progress, just like we see on our master chart there. I'm noting the progress. Hey, I can do that triplet lick really clean at 123 beats per minute or whatever it is. But we're Okay, well, I've got that down pretty good, let's say. I'm feeling pretty good about it. I'm ready to incorporate it into something that I'm playing. I'm ready to 
to install it into my plane. So I'm gonna send that maybe the next day, maybe the same day, I'm gonna send that over to expand. Okay, so see lick there. And I'm going to then in expand, which we'll cover in just a bit, work it into some of my plane. Now the cross picking roll, we can look at the tab for that. I've always had trouble with this y'all. Look at measures 18 and 19. Right here, okay. It's in Beaumont Rag, it goes like this. Okay, so it's a forward cross picking roll, kind of mimics what a banjo would do. We use alternating pick strokes, that's what dif what's difficult about it. Okay, so what I would wanna do here is I'm going to try to calibrate it, okay? And one of the ways that I like to address that here is I want to play it a whole lot in, um, over the course of time. So what if I took that forward roll, whatever it is that you have, it might be just a single lick, and you played it over and over again for three minutes. Three minutes is a long time. But set a timer and say, I'm going to slow this down where I can't mess it up, and I'm going to play it perfectly for three minutes straight. If you mess up, then you need to slow it down a little bit perhaps, okay? You would be surprised at how good you'll get at something if you do that. So, now you're already getting tired of hearing that, and I'm kind of getting tired of playing it. I played it for 20 seconds, maybe. What if we did that for three minutes or for five minutes? Would you get better at it? Yeah, you would. Have you done that before? Played something over and over again? For th what? No, I haven't. Well, then you're not getting better. Like that's how you get better at stuff is doing that. So this is where we calibrate. We get it just, just right. And from there, we can determine what we're going to do with it. Like I mentioned with the c -Lick, we can try to you know, push it into our playing, push it faster throw it into part three, or we can throw it over to part four to the audit. Maybe we think, ah, there's just still something that I'm, I'm not getting right with it and I wanna make sure and get it perfect. Maybe I'm struggling with pick stroke directions, whatever it may be. So in that instance, let's do that. Let's throw our cross pick roll over here in the audit. We'll take a look at that in a couple other videos. Okay, so that's part two, calibration. Um, it's where we're, we're doing some administrative work, to be honest. Uh, we're doing some delegation, kind of, you know, uh, taking things, putting them where they're going to go. And the more that you practice, the more that your calibrate box is going to fill up with material. You're, you're not going to have the trouble of saying, what am I going to practice? You're going to have the trouble of saying, how am I going to have time to practice all the stuff that I want and need to? All right, let's move on to part three.